Hello. Today I'd like to get serious for a moment and share with you all a case that sparked my interest in true crime. It's one of the, my first cases that I ever remember. I was very young, but I still remember this. And it just really hit home because it was very close to my home. And it was just not something that is typical to happen in a small town in Indiana. This is the case of Stephen Judy. It was a Saturday, April the 28th, 1979, and Terry Lee Chasteen was driving her three children to the babysitter's house before reporting to work in the produce department at a Marsh grocery store. While driving on Interstate 465, Chasteen noticed that the driver of a construction truck was motioning towards her car as if something was wrong with her car. She pulled over to the side of the road, and Steve and Judy also pulled over behind her on the road. He told her it looked as if something was wrong with the rear tire, that it might be loose, and he offered to tighten it for her. She got a lug wrench out of the trunk, and he pretended to fix the tire. They each returned to their own vehicles, but Terry got back out of her vehicle and approached Judy again, saying that something was wrong with the emergency brake. Steve and Judy walked to the front of the car and opened the hood. But instead of fixing anything, he removed a coil wire from the engine so that the car would now not start at all. Steve and Judy then offered Terry, age 23, and her kids a ride. So five-year-old Misty four-year-old Mark and nearly three-year-old Stephen crawled into the truck. Within an hour, Terry Chasteen would be raped and murdered, and her three children had been drowned. All four were killed that morning by 24-year-old Stephen Timothy Judy. Mushroom hunters discovered Terry Chasteen's body in the White Lick Creek near State Road 67 in Mooresville in Morgan County, Indiana, a couple of hours after she'd been murdered. A police search of the creek led to the discovery of the bodies of three small children, aged two, four, and five. Terry Chasteen was found naked, with her hands and feet bound with strips of material torn from her clothing and her head covered with her slacks. She'd been gagged and strangled. The evidence indicated that Terry Chasteen had been raped and she had died of strangulation, while the children had died of asphyxia due to drowning. At trial, Steve and Judy presented an insanity defense, and he testified at length concerning his commission of the rape and murders. Stephen Judy stated that he was driving on Interstate 465 in Marion County when he passed Terry Chasteen's car. He testified that he motioned for her to pull over to the shoulder of the road, indicating that something was wrong with the rear of her car. The two vehicles pulled over to the shoulder and stopped, and Judy purported to assist the victims. In the process, he removed the coil wire, thereby rendering Terry Chasteen's car inoperable. When her car would not start, Stephen offered her and her children a ride, and she accepted. Judy then drove the victims to the location of the killings, and he pulled his truck off the road. He testified that he directed them on foot towards the creek, and that he sent her children down the path of ahead of Terry and himself. Stephen testified that he then raped Terry Chasteen and bound her hands and feet and gagged her. When Terry cried out, the children ran back up the path to Judy and started yelling at him and standing around and yelling for him to stop. At that point, he strangled Terry Chasteen and threw her body into the creek. Judy testified that he then threw each of her children as far as he could into the water. He stated that he remembered seeing one of the children standing in the creek. 
Judy returned to his truck after attempting to eradicate his footprints. He then drove away from the scene. Judy's version of the events are corroborated by the evidence presented by the state. So who was Stephen Judy? On the surface, he seemed harmless enough. He could be personable and charming. He liked children, and they liked him. His foster parents also supported him, and yet he was capable of evil. His defense attorney is quoted as saying, The thing that influenced me the most was the realization that there are many people in society who appear to be normal and friendly as he was, and yet they are as dangerous as he was. It's scary for me to think how many people are like him out there in the world. When Stephen Judy was just 13 years old, he posed as a Boy Scout and forced his way into a woman's home in Indianapolis. He raped her and then stabbed her with a pocket knife until the blade broke. He then used a hatchet to fracture her skull and cut a finger off of her hand as she tried to block his blows. For that brutal attack, he spent six months at a center for delinquent juveniles. From there, he was admitted to the Central State Mental Hospital, where he was diagnosed as a sexual psychopath. He stayed at the Central State Mental Hospital from October 1970 until January 1973, when he was released at the age of 16 into the custody of his foster parents. His foster parents were not told of the violent details of Judy's past, and they had several young children of their own at home. They even bailed Judy out of jail for armed robbery just a week before Terry Chastain and her children were murdered. At the trial, the jurors all agreed that Stephen Timothy Judy knew what he was doing, and he knew that it was wrong. He was not crazy, and he was found guilty. At the death penalty phase of the trial, Stephen Judy ordered his attorneys not to present any evidence of mitigating circumstances. Judy stated to the jury in open court at the sentencing that he would advise them to give him the death sentence because he had no doubt that he would kill again if he had the opportunity. And some of the people he might kill in the future might be members of the jury. He actually looked directly at the jury foreman and said, I know where you live, and I know you have a daughter. Stephen Judy let the judge know he wanted to die. He told the judge, I honestly want you to give me the death penalty, because one day I might get out. And if you don't want another death hanging over your head, I think that's the only thing you can do. So the jury gave him what he wanted and sentenced him to die in Indiana's electric chair, Old Bessie, as she's nicknamed. The murders occurred April the 28th, 1979. He was sentenced to death on February the 25th, 1980. And he was executed March the 9th, 1981. So justice was pretty quick in this case, however... It is a cautionary tell that you cannot trust just anyone. He was fairly good looking. She thought he was being a good Samaritan, just an ordinary looking guy, but underneath was evil. These victims deserve to be remembered. Terry was a beautiful, absolutely gorgeous 21 year old with her life ahead of her. And he took that away, along with her five-year-old daughter, Misty, four-year-old Stephen, and two-year-old Mark. They deserve to be remembered. If you would like to learn more about this case, there was a book written back in the 1980s called Burn, Judy, Burn. And that book can still be purchased online on Amazon in the Kindle format. I will put a link in the